Guru Dev Sri Sri Ravi Shankar is the founder of Art of Living and needs no introduction. He is a spiritual leader that has been leading his, lending his voice to helping over 1.2 million people globally to stay calm through his live meditation sessions, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, remember, you can join the conversation. Tweet at us at Plus TV Africa or at Show Africa one with the hashtag Waze, or you send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 Thank you so much for joining us, Gurudev. Now, if you can hear me, I'll just go into the first question. Um, life as we know it will never be the same. How do we overcome the paranoia and manage anxiety that comes with uncertainty? Our world has faced many challenges. Of course, it's new for the current generation. But during World War II, or after post-World War II, there has been a big depression. And in the 80s, there has been problem. In the 70s, there has been problem. In the 60s, the world has faced um, many challenges. Especially African countries have faced many civil wars, many uh, disturbances. But we have overcome them all. We should have the faith that the entire human race will come together and will help each other. When we don't have this confidence, this faith, then we are prone to more um, paranoia, more nervousness. I would say um, that we will be able to get over this pandemic. Thank you so much. So Lami, you have a question? Okay, um, Guru, um, many people are experiencing anxiety over their health, potential loss, job loss during this pandemic. What do you think they should do? This is just like another war. This is the third world war, I would say, where you don't even see the enemy. <laughs> but we have the strength. We will all work together. We will all stay together. And we will help all those who are less fortunate. And we should, um, we should continue. You know, three things would help us in this uh, state of uncertainty, paranoia, fear, anxiety, tension, three things will help. First is have faith in yourself. You can maneuver any tough situation. Invoke the warrior in you. Yes? Take it as a challenge. Right? This is the first thing. The second thing is faith in the goodness of the society. There are good people in society who would come to our help. We must strongly believe this. Even those whom we consider as bad guys, they are not really bad. Of course, they may be bad in their behavior, in their action. Deep inside them, there is a good soul hiding, even in the bad guys. It's only sleeping. The goodness is sleeping. So let us renew our faith in the goodness of society. Huh? 95% of the people in the society, they are good, good-hearted. They want to help each other. There is human values very much alive in the lives of uh, the billions of people who inhabit this planet. So let us have faith in the goodness in the society. Third is the Almighty. Faith in the Almighty. Almighty loves us so dearly. Almighty is not there out there to punish us, but to care us, love us, like our own parents. How much a parent would love their children? The Almighty loves hundred times more. This faith, faith in the Almighty, unseen Almighty, whatever name you give it to that power. Second, the faith in the human nature, which is to help each other. The third is faith in oneself. This would carry us um, along over this tough time to the goal where we want to reach. Okay. So thank you so much. I really love the part of faith in, and in the goodness of the society. In, in fact, today, 
as one was talking about how he saw people sharing food and all of that. So um, the third question, because we hear that meditation is actually good. We are asking who needs meditation and how can meditation help manage anxiety? See, anyone who thinks can meditate. And meditation will help everybody. It gives good rest to the body. It cleans our mind from unwanted um, stress that we have been carrying and it sharpens our intellect, it invokes our intuitive ability. The benefits are so many for meditation. It also helps to build our immune system. Meditation builds our immune system, very strong immune system. So there are a number of scientific research which has happened on meditation. And how and its benefits to human society. It improves the grey matter in the brain, it changes the structure of the brain, it helps in your uh, anxiety, hypertension, diabetes, many of these illnesses also, it helps. So, meditation is very, very good and you know, very important for everyone to do. It soothes our nervous system and gives us deep rest of six to eight hours of sleep in the small window of 20 minutes, 30 minutes, you know. Just try once and you will see you would not like to leave it because it is so refreshing and it kindles uh, the happiness with it. Well, that's true. Love me so much. Okay, you <laughs> thank you very much for that. Um, so my next question is, um, how do we stay positive and build a healthy mindset, a mindset, especially during this period? To stay positive, we should not too much immerse ourselves uh, in the news, Absolutely. right? What do we do from the morning till night? We keep listening to the same horror stories around the world, then we are bound to become depressed. We must be in touch with the news. Three times a day, four times a day, few minutes is good. But the rest of the time, focus on music. Focus on other things that you could do. In the lockdown period, you are at home. You can learn many skills. You can learn many languages. You can uh, become an artist. You can take interest in science. There are a million things you can do. Wow. Right? <laughs> and inspire each other through social media to stay positive. Awesome, okay, so at least I took up writing again, so I'm doing something positive. Yeah, you did. All right, so my final question will be to you. Um, does mind stability help um, keep the body healthy? Because I hear a lot of people saying mind stability. Yes, a strong mind can carry along a weak body. But I tell you, a weak mind cannot carry along even a healthy and strong body. First of all, it doesn't let your body remain strong. Weak mind drains it immediately. If it stays, even then it cannot carry it along. So, mental strength is absolutely essential. And one thing, you know, the African continent is given with this gift of mental strength. People in Africa have this strength. We have the rhythm in Africa like nowhere in the world. From children, you know, you start beating the drum, playing the drum. You see the kids have that rhythm that's very unique to African continent. So when you have the rhythm, when you have the resolve, it is the apt time to go deep in meditation and it would simply empower us, make us really be happy and open a huge array of wealth, of wealth of talent that we all carry within us and we don't discover it, right? It can boost the confidence of our young people it can bring solace to the elderly people and it can bring clarity and intuitive ability 
to everybody to carry on with their work. Yeah? Do meditation. It's very, very good, I tell you. Take it from me. Okay, all right. So, much. as a global um, leader, we have curated video questions from different people across the globe. And here are some questions that we thought we needed you to respond to. The first will come from Ella Gandhi, the granddaughter of Mahatma Gandhi. Please um, watch this video. Namaste. I would like to ask one question. We are going through very difficult times at the present moment. People of my age are asked to isolate and to remain in our homes. Yet we see the suffering around us. We see the terrible uh, pain that uh, so many millions of people are going through. And there is a kind of feeling of helplessness. What is your advice to people like us? How can we overcome this feeling of helplessness and do something that can help the world? Thank you. Yeah, so that was the granddaughter of Mahatma Gandhi. So what do you have to say to that? Mahatma Gandhi ji has always said prayer. He emphasized so much importance on prayer. I would say we do our effort, whatever we can, and rest we leave it to God and we pray. Prayer and effort, both together, will help us to afloat in these tough times. See, you are in isolation, no doubt, but emotionally you don't need to get isolated. You can still be in touch with people through social media, you can speak to them on phone. All these facilities are there, all these possibilities are there, right? Now, when we cannot help everybody physically, you don't need to sit and get depressed. Rather, you leave that or you pray to the divine, divine Ask divinity to protect everybody and help everyone. And inspire people to come out and do service to those less fortunate people. Okay, all right. So thank you for that. Um, we have uh, another professor um, that sent in his video question. That's Professor Maharaj. Um, so listen to the question and um, if you can get your feedback. Namaste Guruji. COVID-19 has generated unprecedented fear and anxiety about the unknown in terms of whether one may be infected, the possibility of survival, and the risk of transmitting this disease to others. There are also fears about the economic downturn, millions losing their jobs, and the devastating social pathologies. During such daunting crisis, there is an inevitable turn to faith across the religious spectrum. What can religion and faith offer under these circumstances? All right, that's a valid fear. A lot of people are afraid. So um, what would you have to say yeah. to that? Yes, at moments like this of great calamity, which is causing job loss, causing anxiety and death to millions around the world, the faith is the thing that holds one. It's like for a, uh, it's like life jacket for a person who is sinking in this ocean of misery. Faith is the life jacket. We must hold on to it by prayer and by faith that only good will happen to us in the future. We'll be able to cross over this tough time that we are facing. You know, the, as I said earlier, our planet has faced many such challenges before. And people have stayed and humanity has continued through all those challenges. So we will continue to exist, we will continue to help each other and divinity will definitely take care of us. Let us make our faith stronger in this moment 
Let people sing, they dance, they pray, they study, they understand the philosophy. We must continue to do these things. There is a lot of time now with people, so it's a time to read uh, and also meditate, learn techniques to improve ourselves, learn techniques to calm our anxiety levels. Meditation and breathing exercise, pranayama, will help us to get over anxiety and uh, neurosis and all these issues. <laughs> Let me, yeah, I just saw you nodding. Meditation. All right, so we still have two more questions. We have one from Von Chaka Chaka. Um, she sent in a question as well. I mean, we had so many questions, we just had to limit it to these four questions. So Von Chaka Chaka's video will come up next. Um, the question that I have is, um, we can see and we know that uh, COVID-19 is affecting the whole world. My question to His Holiness is, um, what is the lesson that this virus is teaching us? The whole world has come to a standstill and uh, we can't even predict the future. What are we learning from this? Thank you very much. I particularly love her question, the lesson in it. So lesson. what would be your response to that, sir? We have been on a rat race. We have been running around. There has been so much of consumerism in our lives. We even had no time to reflect about our own life. We never even looked at ourselves and see where are we heading to. Right? And what I see is this virus, which has really caused such a standstill in the entire planet, has compelled people to look into their priorities, look into their own life, and value life itself. We were not valuing life, we were valuing the accessories to life. We were running behind the accessories not really paying attention to the human life or the values that we are supposed to stand for. So this pandemic has rekindled the human values, has compelled the human society to set right their priorities and become more compassionate. See, suddenly the crime rate has fallen down in the whole world. Nature is rejoicing. Sparrows and other birds have started showing up everywhere. Hmm? Rivers are appearing cleaner. Weather condition has become better. There are many signs that we get from the nature. It's cleansing itself somewhere. We have been emitting so much carbon prints that the planet Earth was really suffering. Climate change has taken a big toll on the environment around the world. Now, since a month or two, when all the traffic has come to stand still, when there is lockdown everywhere, each continent is facing some sort of nature revival. Right? Of course, this fear of virus will continue. Uh, people would be afraid to go in groups for some more period till we find the right vaccine, right medicine for this and also to eliminate this virus. See, once upon a time there was plague, there was cholera, there was smallpox, chicken pox, many other polio. Polio has been eradicated from the world today. Similarly, this virus will take a little time to be eradicated from the planet. Yeah? Till then we have to hold our breath. Till then we have to follow the norms that the medical community has placed before us. At the same time, have total faith in the law of nature, in the divinity that will carry us uh, along these tough times. All right, thank you so much. So we have the final question from Chris Landsberg. He's going to be um, um, taking his own video as well. 
So my question is, in a context of high levels of inequality, excruciating poverty and destitution, where some people already adopt an attitude, I am already dying, what is the point? What could be the role and purpose of spirituality to empower us to modestly help such people, but more importantly, to empower them so that they have a sense of hope for a better tomorrow uh, and believe that they can overcome this dreadful disease. Okay, so what would be your response to Chris's question? Yes, I would say a bit of both. Definitely spirituality will give hope and will give back the lost enthusiasm, so as to say. It will take us out of depression, out of uh, apathy, you know. Uh, many people get depressed very soon. The moment they cross 50, 60, they get so depressed. They feel they are useless. But it's the spirituality that keeps the flame of enthusiasm alive till the last breath, till the last minute. You know, we are on this planet till the last minute of our life here. We must live with enthusiasm. We must be active. We should serve the society, help others. See, when we sit and think, what do I gain? The taker is never happy. There are two attitudes. One is the taker. If you are a taker, then you can't be happy all through. You will be happy only with short duration, short intervals only. Rest of the time we are miserable. But if you are a giver, nothing can take away your happiness. You are here to contribute something back to the society. You are here to give happiness to others. When this second position we take on in our life, as a giver, not as a taker or seeker of happiness, but as giver of happiness, I tell you, depression doesn't come anywhere near you. Huh? Life uh, is lifted to another plain all together and that's what spirituality does it connects you with yourself and it connects you with everybody around you and it connects you to the universal truth universal spirit by which your uh, enthusiasm your compassion your love never never ever diminishes this is my personal experience Wow. <laughs> yeah. I think we can, we can wrap it up on there. Uh, at that point, I am compassion, I'm enthusiasm. Now, thank you so much, Guru Dev, for, for, for your time this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, all the best to you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> all right, so we'll take a quick break. <laughs> Akshay Jane joins us right after the break. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> 